Lovely lady of the roses, will you be my love tonight? Will you take off all your clothes and concentrate on holding me tight? Will you hold me very tightly, just as tightly as you can? Yes, Pete? Here's the tea up here. Yeah. I'll just give it another couple of minutes to brew, you know, because we don't want to lose any of the flavour, do we? We don't want to lose any of that delicious flavour bursting forth from the tea buds. No. I'm using the larger capacity tea bags now, you know. Oh, not those bigger bags as advertised. Yeah. They're a bit more expensive, but it's worth it in the long run, because um, once you save up a hundred labels, you send them into the firm, and they send you back a plastic replica of a World Cup football player. How delightful. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And once you've got the entire World Cup football team, you send that into the firm and they send you back a free tea bag. <laughs> a free tea bag? A gratis tea bag. What a wonderful gesture in this materialistic age. Yeah, it gives you a ray of hope, doesn't it? Certainly does. Well, while you were brewing up that new style tea, mm. I was reading quite an interesting article about the emancipation of women by Miss Jermaine Greer. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you peruse the item of all, sir? Well, I got about halfway through the first word, then I had to nip off. <laughs> <laughs> to check on my rice pudding, because my pinger was going. Oh, uh, well, it's uh, quite an interesting article about the subjugation of women throughout the ages, mm. how they've been held down and dominated by the male. Oh, yeah. You'd be mum, would you? Certainly. And, uh, I think Miss Greer, who is not an unintelligent woman... Oh, no, let's give her that. Let's give her that. Mm. I think she has raised a number of interesting and salient points. Yeah, she raised two on the cover that caught my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't follow you there, Dad. There's nothing written on the cover. No, Pete, the points I'm referring to are not of a literary nature. <laughs> they have a certain visual appeal. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. dear, oh dear. Do you realise you're doing precisely what Miss Greer objects to? What? You're treating women purely as sexual objects. I merely meant I wouldn't mind ladies using me as a sexual object, having them satiate their lust upon my body. Oh, but surely you'd rather be respected for your mind rather than your body. No. <laughs> well, eventually, yeah. But I'd like them to give my body a good going over first. <laughs> I see, you like them to start on your body and then gradually work their way down towards your mind. <laughs> yeah, that sounds all right, yeah. Are those uh, scones ready yet? Yeah, they, they should be done now. They've been in there three days. <laughs> well, if you want something nice, you have to wait for it. Uh, in this house, yeah. Actually, I think whatever Miss Greer says, I think a lot of women has improved since Victorian times. Oh, for a lot of women it has, yes. Yeah. I mean, in Victorian times, a woman's life was pure drudgery. Pure it? drudgery. She was glued to the stove all day. Yeah. She wasn't allowed out of the house unless she was wearing a chaperone. No, right. <laughs> Mind you, there are still countries in the world today where the woman is completely dominated by the male. Really? Where? Take the Far East, for example. Mm. Would you butter this scone for me? Oh, certainly. There, in the Far East, the woman is treated as a mere not to thing. <laughs> oh. Sorry. All right? That's about it, yeah. Do you want it all round the edges? Well, naturally, I'm not going to start eating in the middle, am I? <laughs> in the Far East, the woman is treated as a mere beast of burden. Mm. Do you know she has to walk ten yards behind her husband? Really? The only time she's allowed to walk in front of her husband is in suspected minefields. God, <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? It's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, so is this. What? This tea is a horrendous brew. What's wrong with it? You smell it, you'll find out what's wrong. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> That's ghastly, isn't it? Like the Ganges in here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. oh, look, I've got Martin Peters up the spell. <laughs> oh, blimey, I had the whole team, too. Bang goes your free team, mate. <laughs> Getting back to Miss Greer, mm. uh, if we may for a moment. I feel, quite honestly, she rather overstates her case. Well, she pushes it too far, in my view. Lucky old you. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps not. 
Um, no, you see, I feel quite honestly there are certain things that ladies have that we men can never share in. I mean, try as we might, Pete, we could never have a baby. Well, try as we certainly won't. <laughs> oh, point taken. Yeah. Yes, good point. Um, you see, not for us, not for us, the exquisite pleasure of a baby at our breast. Milk and two lumps, as usual. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I agree, you see, I think man, denied his ultimate creativity, mm. channels his mind through the realm of art and science. Yeah, well, he's bound to, isn't he? And look back throughout history. Where will you find the female equivalent, say, of Ludwig van Beethoven? Oh, Beethoven and his incomparable symphonies. Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer and his lyrical nocturnes. Pascal. Pascal and his inimitable lozenges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to go along with Professor Einstein here mm. and agree that the whole thing is really tied up in our genes. Yeah, right. It is um, <laughs> the genetic factor. But these women's livers, they will not face up to the fact. Do you know, they even regard the brassiere as a symbol of masculine enslavement. Your moustache is falling off. <laughs> I know, the doctor told me to give it up. They regard the brassiere as a symbol of masculine enslavement. Women's livers regard the brassiere as a symbol of masculine enslavement, yeah. Oh, women's livers regard the brassiere as a symbol of masculine enslavement? Yes. I mean, that is ridiculous. It that is dark. That is absurd. We, we didn't push them into their brassiere. Of course did we? we didn't. <laughs> I mean, I, I ask you, did we males force the females into their brassiere? At no time. I've been trying for years to get them out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and who was it who invented the brassiere? For that matter, who was it who invented the artificial moustache? <laughs> <laughs> Einstein. <laughs> no, it won't stick on. No? No. What I say is bung it. <laughs> Lo and behold, Rudolph Valentino. Who are you? I'm a stranger and I've been bugging you. Oh. Um, <laughs> who was it who invented the brassiere for the benefit of ladies? Who? A man. Oh, you might have known. The celebrated German, Otto Titzling. <laughs> <laughs> Working away in Hamburg in 1810. First come up with the Buston and the Gazelle Sharp. He jumped out of the bath shouting Wunderbra. <laughs> Marvellous. And think of all the other wonderful things that men have been coming up with for ladies. Oh, yeah. Throughout uh, the centuries. I mean, the kitchen stove. Oh, a miracle. The ironing board. The shade d'oeuvre. And, of course, in recent years, the paper panty. An enormous breakthrough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man has invented the paper panty especially for ladies. You see, they're so economical. Because whereas in the past, Mrs. Woolley used to have to toil for hours and hours over her knickers in the sink, yeah. now with paper panties, all she has to do of an evening is go over them with a rubber. Now, <laughs> well, um... It's all that stuff about erroneous zones, isn't it? No. It's not erroneous, it's erogenous. Erroneous is where you go wrong. That's where I go wrong. <laughs> oh, you go wrong on the erogenous zones, do you? Yeah. Well, it's not surprising. I mean, there's so many of the bleeding things, aren't there? A well, lady is peppered from head to foot with erogenous zones. Have you seen this diagram? Oh, there, look. It's like a map of the underground. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a man is very hard put to know where to start his sexual voyage. Well, not the northern line. Oh. <laughs> you end up in Crouch End. <laughs> You see, what may attract one lady... What may... What may attract one lady may repel the other. Well, this is the dilemma. This is the eternal dilemma that has haunted man throughout the ages. You see, you could be spending six hours tickling her calves <laughs> with a Japanese feather device, <laughs> as advertised. Yes. When all she needs to get her going is your hot breath on her... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, uh, busty substances. Uh, busty <laughs> substances. Uh, busty substances. Yeah, I agree. You see, I think ladies, having so many and varied erogenous zones about their person, I think the least they could do is to label them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just label them in order of preference. Yeah. Then at least you could be certain of starting off on the right foot. Yeah. That's a daft place to start. <laughs> I was uh, speaking metaphorically. I was not suggesting you go crawling round the floor at a party, <laughs> sucking ladies' toes. <laughs> Though, of course, that might turn them on in these freaky, degenerate days we live in. Yeah. Have a go, suck a toe. <laughs> that might be the slogan for the salacious 70s. Yeah, well, count me out, mate. And me too. I'm off to the pub for a pint of beer. Are you coming? No, no, I'm expecting a phone call from Stella Newby. She said, don't call me, I'll call you. Oh, yes, I remember that. It was about four years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, well, she's a very shy girl. She doesn't like to push herself forward, no. you know. Anyway, I've got a lot of ironing I'd like to catch up on. Right, well, uh, tidy up in general and okay. put some more glue on my moustache, would you? Right, then. Ta-ra. I'll see you later. Ta-da. Marie.